I think I'll um, take a break from the heads of exchanges and go to uh, Jay Island, uh, the president of GE Africa, because uh, I think it's important to also get the perspective uh, of um, someone who's present in many of these countries. Um, Jay, please share uh, GE's perspective on Africa's investment climate, what opportunities there are, uh, particularly for institutional investors, uh, and also to partner with GE, given that you're across Africa. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as the chairwoman said, my name's Jay Ireland. I run GE Africa. I'm located in Nairobi, Kenya, and I've been there for the last three and a half years. Um, we all know about the Africa demographic growth, uh, population, middle class growth, uh, all of the stronger economies, et cetera. But the key thing for all of that to continue is going to be a focus on a few different things. One of the main ones is going to be improving the infrastructure that is uh, needed in, across the continent. And as you look at that, there's probably anywhere from 50 to $90 billion a year right now that is going to be needed for Africa infrastructure investment. And that is going to be across a number of different, uh, whether it's transportation, uh, power, uh, aviation, healthcare, uh, oil and gas equipment, et cetera. There's a ton of uh, opportunities from a standpoint of financing projects. And I think the key thing around that is a combination of the improvement of the economies, but also much more private sector involvement from a standpoint of uh, what we're seeing in Nigeria with the with the uh, privatization of the power sector. And I think that gives a lot more potential for investment, and more importantly, a lot more potential for continued investment, continued improvement in, in performance because of the stringent requirements that financial investors will put on the operators, which is, ne which is necessary around maintenance, et cetera. So I think there's a couple of different ways to invest as you think about it. One is from a standpoint of project finance, Another one is a standpoint of uh, having vehicles that are available for private sector to use. And I'll give you a couple of examples that we have and that what we're working on. One is uh, we have a $350 million uh, facility with Standard Bank uh, to invest in distributed power. We've got a $10 million facility with Kenya Commercial Bank for Kenya uh, around our health care. Uh, business and uh, around x-rays and diagnostic imaging tools. We're starting up supplier development funds where we're going to seed capital to supply chain and continue to build it out and we will use our offtake as the ability to finance. And so when you see a few of those different capabilities, it gives the investment community different ways to invest, to, to really look at Africa and partner with some of the private sector. We're also looking at developing more potential around that, where we would have a, a, uh, a box, if you will, of, of requirements from investors of what, what they're looking for from projects. I think that's very important from your perspective to make sure the risks are, are perceived appropriately, and more importantly, the risks are managed. I think another key thing that the stock exchanges bring is to increase the depth of the capital markets. One of the uh, great untapped potentials in Africa is the entrepreneurial small medium enterprise uh, businesses that are out there. And I think from that perspective, there's a ton of opportunity and we need to get more capital capability to those, to those um, companies to, as they continue to grow in the economies. So I view the African uh, economy from our perspective as, as dynamic, uh, very growth oriented, We've had tremendous success. We look forward to working with any of you on projects and on continuing to invest in the growth area of the world right now, which is Africa. Thank you. Um, my name is Benga Ogunjimi. I'm uh, with LDI Africa. Um, we run um, a recruiting program that connects young professionals around the world to opportunities to serve and work on the continent. I was wondering if you can all talk about your strategy to human capital investments um, on the continent and also the um, issue of talent and workforce development um, with the businesses that you, that you fund. What is your strategy around human capital development continent? 
thank you. I have the hard job of distributing the questions uh, given the short time that we have. Uh, Mr. J. Uh, Island, uh, I'd like you to tackle the, the last question about human capital, given that you uh, work across uh, okay. the uh, continent. Thank you. Um, I think it's imperative for any company to continue to invest in human capital. We, and, and I think from a multinational perspective, coming in to sell, uh, you need to have a holistic approach. Uh, we, we have done a number of different things, one, inter one with our internal employees, which is we have every leadership program that we have in the United States, we have in Africa. Uh, we've, we've put 200 um, you know, young professionals uh, currently through that program uh, with a continued focus on it. But more importantly, we need to build out the supply chain capability as well as other companies, and we're, we're investing in curriculum development in several African universities, mostly around technical capabilities, engineering, et cetera. Uh, we're sponsoring internships, scholarships, anything to continue to introduce Africans to the workplace and understand uh, what the potentials are by, uh, from that standpoint. So we feel that this is one of the most important things that anybody can do. We have a learning advisory board, which is made up of a number of different African uh, university presidents. And again, with a focus on developing a core curricula that really is used from a standpoint of uh, employability. And then, of course, you have to have the jobs available, which we do, as do many other countries, or companies in countries. So it's an absolute critical, critical aspect. Thank you. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.